Hello, Vernio here. Today I'd like to talk to you about a game called Banished. Seeing as my channel is new, I just thought I'd give you some fair warning. I do have a natural affinity for building simulators, so perhaps this review will be less critical than others. That said, if you're approaching Banished from the same mindset as me, then this might be the review for you. Let me take a moment of your time to talk about the start menu. So we have options here, which includes key rebinding. We also have a, a, a nice audio option. I really like the sound of the uh, clicks made by the UI volume. Um, we also have an achievement system that I'll be talking more extensively about later, especially so in the evaluation of this review. Uh, the tutorial section, very useful. I, I did a few myself before I got stuck in. Um, Obviously load is as you'd expect, and with new you're also able to name your town, you can get a map seed that you can share, I'll be sharing mine in the video description, uh, terrain types which includes valleys and mountains, I'm hoping that they increase that later, terrain size, same deal really, and climate, again I hope they include more different types of, of climates. Uh, disasters on or off, if you've ever played a SimCity game you know what those are, and starting conditions which um, I, I always start on medium I find, I think it, it just gives you the best impression of the game. Anyway, let's get stuck in. For someone who likes to make short review videos, Banish presents an interesting problem. While I talk about the game, I'll be setting up the small foundations of a village. I'm doing this to provide an indication of the duration each village requires to set up. I have speed set to about 10 times faster in-game and have doubled the footage speed for this video. When you sit down to play Banished, you're in it for the long haul, if your village succeeds, and that's an interesting topic to bring up first, failure state. With the success of survival titles in recent years, it's understandable that we now see survival mechanics brought forward into other genres. In past building simulators, the inhabitants seem somewhat arbitrary. Their purpose was merely visual, with at times shoehorned in methods to make raw data seem more animated, not so in Banished. The villagers who populate your town have nutritional needs, social and reproductive needs, and succumb to some of life's difficulties, such as age, disease, and at times falling rocks. They at times almost remind me of the game Lemmings. This is not a bad thing. If I was to put my two cents forward, I would say that we're probably more likely to see some of these types of mechanics brought into building simulators in future. I've not had the same level of satisfaction I've had from Banished in any other building simulator. When you get through the winter and your village starts to grow, you really feel like you've accomplished something, especially in the harder difficulties. Your first landmark will be to create a stable population. This is easier said than done, especially if you're new to the game. There are many elements that you need to micromanage for the success of your town. In tune with the stable population, you also need to consider stable resources as your town grows. A further point from this is the progression itself. Banished has no tech tree, no unlocking mechanic in terms of what you can build with the exception of livestock, fruits and crops. I feel this is fundamentally a bad thing for your experience of the game long term. You should desire to expand for more reasons than simply filler enhancements like an achievement system. For me personally, I do not see the need to progress my population beyond any minimum amount required for it to be stable. It seems completely detrimental to the lifespan of the town. Eventually, you will run out of spaces to build, and will rely on the merchants to supply you with resources normally granted by the mines and quarries. Therefore, your population is never truly sustainable. When you discover this, it's quite upsetting. I don't know if this is something the designer intentionally implemented as a lesson, perhaps an insight into his own theoretical dialogue about society. Considering Banish was created by one very talented man, it's entirely plausible. All I can say is that on this path for discovery, this was hours and hours and hours of fun. If I could take a moment now to address my feelings going on from this, the creator, Luke Horowitz, has some opportunities here, one that he could pursue in several different ways. He has expressed an interest to fix some of the minor bugs that have surfaced from the community now growing around the game, which is very good. It shows the kind of designer he is. Beyond this, he could use the success and money of the game to create an entirely new title of the same genre, hire some help, and get some amazing new title out that could catapult his development label, Shining Rock Software, even further. Or, he could spend some time producing additional content for Banished. At the moment it feels a bit like a masterpiece half written, an incredible game but with some stagnating limitations. Depending on his angle, I really hope he allows for the production of a dev kit as soon as possible. This will ensure that the community stays strong enough in time for any of these options to come into fruition. Allow me now some time to make my opinion clear. If you enjoy building simulators, you should buy Banished. 
It's already a good game and holds great promise. Right, well that's it for today folks. I'll be back soon. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like and subscribe. And if you feel very generous, I'd really enjoy your comments in the section below. Thank you and goodbye.